Hello everybody. I'm just doing a little short video here on um, sort, of, sort of the theory behind differentiation and also on stem cells. So what are they and what different types of stem cell are there in the body? So we've um, got this um, animation here, was this illustration here by this guy called Hal Waddington, his nickname was Hal, 1957. Um, and he's kind of the, the guy that came up with this idea of differentiation and um, also epigenetics. And it's been used in a number of different applications up to present day to kind of explain how cells develop um, and also can um, un -differ sorry, differentiate and then possibly undifferentiate. We're, we're looking at differentiation um, as a process sort of starting from the top of the hill here all the way down to the bottom. So... He used this sort of landscape to kind of explain what's happening during a cell development into different types of specialized cells. So we know that actually when we start life, fertilization takes place. And um, when those two very specialized cells come together in fertilization, they create this one cell with all of the DNA in it you know, mixed from sperm and egg. Now this cell here is complete, it's not differentiated in, un in any way at all, so it's undifferentiated. This cell here is actually a zygote, yeah, cell resulting from fertilization, and it is totipotent, so this is uh, stage one totipotency all right so it can become any cell in the body at all because we all started from one cell now we have a huge range of specialized cells uh, so this is totipotency i've got room here but the next stage is the becoming of an embryo so we have some specialization taking place here it's called a blastocyst this is the embryo so this is the divided cells for resulting from the zygote. Yeah, so it's a multicellular structure. This is not totipotent anymore. Some of these cells will go on to um, become any of the body types cells. So it will be anything of your body. And some of these cells will start to form the placental membrane, the placenta. So not every cell is possible at this point so we call it pluripotent so these cells here particularly will become the body cells so we'll concentrate on those the ones around the outside will become um, the placenta okay so here we are at the top of the hill now let's assume that this cell here is stage one Let's go to for the embryo. Now, as the, the cell divides and develops, it moves down the slope to two. So we've got this embryo structure here, multicellular structure here. At this point, cells are under the influence of local rules in this embryo. So depending on where the cell is in that embryo, depends on what sort of chemical signals it might be getting in that local area. So let's say, you know, we have a cell in one area being exposed to a, a number of different chemicals and a cell in another area that's exposed to another set of chemicals. Now, what these chemicals are doing, I mean, is, is exposing the cell to a different environment different chemicals actually affect the DNA and the genes within that nucleus of that cell in different ways. It's important to remember that at all stages, the DNA in each cell is the same. So what's happening at this point and this point is that the chemical signals are actually switching different genes on or off. So if I switch on 10 genes 
that are going to um, encourage these cells to start producing calcium deposits, for example, um, then we might be looking at sort of skeletal tissue, skeletal um, organs in the body. However, we turn on a different set of genes, we get a different set of characteristics. Now, we may get to the point here where um, actually at this point, we've differentiated enough to be at a new level of organization, a new, new level of differentiation, where we might be cells in a different organ, let's say in a bone. At this point, we are now at stage three, multipotent. Yeah, we might be able to make any cell within that organ. Yes. So, for example, it might be a bone marrow um, cell, depending on where it is in that organ. Or it might be a ligament cell that attaches the bone to the other bone. Okay. Um, very, very important to realise, actually, when we get to the bottom of the hill, it's very difficult to roll back up again. So once we've reached this stage, it's quite hard to roll back up and become pluripotent again and turn into another cell because a number of different genes have been turned off already or on already. So those changes have already been made. It can happen, in especially in terms of um, cancer cells, when a cell becomes cancerous, it does return right back up to the top here and becomes um, a cell that is now undifferentiated again. But we can come back to that later on in the biology course. So at this stage, when we're at multipotency, we're really talking about cells that produce one type of differentiated cell. These cells are still able to reproduce and produce other cells that can produce the finals, the, the, the last cell. So we call these stem cells or adult stem cells. And you'll find these Let's give another example. Uh, this one here develops into a stem cell in the skin. And the stem cells in the skin will start producing a number of different types of skin cell. But they themselves can actually reproduce you know, uh, and start producing more stem cells that will then produce either epidermal cells or possibly fat cells in that case. In, and there's a, a few other types as well. Okay, so just a little recap. We start up the top here with a, a cell formed from a sperm and an egg. These are then reprogrammed completely to become undifferentiated totipotent cells. They're able to become anything. These divide and slightly differentiate into an embryo. These cells here are becoming body cells. The ones around the outside are beginning to become placental cells. So we call it pluripotent. Yeah, cell capable of becoming any any of the body cell types. Yeah. More differentiation again, genes switched on, genes switched off, we become multipotent. Uh, and at that stage, we're multipotent, we can actually become these adult stem cells in each organ that are able to become any cells within that organ, and we call those adult stem cells. So this guy, Conrad Waddington, was a bit of a genius. I mean, 1957 was, was really only a few years away from actually discovering the structure of DNA. Uh, so it's amazing, really, that he came up with this, and it's still being used in developmental cell biology. All right, stop sharing there.